carry them in the wheelchair down steps sometimes and up. I swear to God, when they get off the plane, out of the wheelchair and running to the car, I've seen it. They play, they play sick. I have seen it. And the lineup today to get on first, before first-class passengers even, it's a certain reverse spite. They know the first-class guy either upgraded because he worked his butt off to earn it or he paid for it. But now you get the low-end, the real low-end cheaters, and they got one relative, as I said before, with a fake limp and 12 family members accompanying them. They go on first. You've got to put an end to this. Savage. The Savage Nation. Takes the news and tears it apart and puts it back together in a way that I can understand it. Talk 910 KNEW. All day long I'd bitty bitty bum if I were a wealthy man. You don't have to be a wealthy man. You voted for Obama. You got all the free medical care you want. I, tell you, I don't go for this kind of job. I never liked Fiddler on the Roof. It made my flesh crawl. I squirm when I listen. I never liked it. It was like that part of phew, Reminded me of a sugared bagel. I'm on, like, the CNN website every once a week. I go on to see if I can stomach it. Here they show Obama shaking with Gaddafi. Now listen to what they write under it. Handshake diplomacy. This is CNN now. Obama's gesture is latest effort to reach out to controversial world leaders to improve U.S. image. Do you understand that that doesn't make any sense? What do you mean improve U.S. image? Who, with terrorists? You mean by shaking a terrorist's hand? We improve our image in his mind of America? What, what, what are you kidding me? Clinton left behind a presidential foreign travel. That's amazing. She really, I don't understand how she got the, uh, beaten by him. Can anyone call me on that? How did the Obama machine beat the Clinton machine? Does anyone know how that happened? Does anyone have any idea how the Obama machine outmaneuvered the Clinton machine? You know, you look back now, you wonder if Hillary Clinton would have been less of an extremist than him as a president. You don't know. It's hard to say right now. Her lining up with the Honduran president as a communist worries me deeply. I thought she moved a little to the center, but that really freaked me out. When the president travels out of, out of the nation, his secretary of state usually is with him. But apparently, he doesn't like her, she doesn't like him, and she was left home. It's like leaving the children at home. Obama is ditching his top diplomat when he travels abroad. And by the time Obama returns from Ghana on Sunday, he will have visited nine countries without Hillary Clinton. Why is that? It could be because he doesn't want her gaining any more publicity because she's going to clearly run against him in the primaries uh, uh, in the next election. It's as simple as that. And the fact of the matter is, normally secretaries of state travel lockstep with their, with their president. They're like their, you know, their personal ambassador. It's astounding. This is really a, a weird out-of-protocol situation here. But, uh, you know, I, look, I could do politics anytime you want. I can talk about dogs on airplanes or uh, pigs in delis, whatever you want to do, or flying pigs if you want to know whatever. 1-800-449-8255. Please go to michaelsavage.com because there's a story that you have to, you have to see. And I want it's about Representative Jefferson that fine, upstanding uh, congressman from New Orleans where they found money in his freezer. But he was able to delay the trial a very, very long time. They got him on videotape, the FBI, putting them, taking bribes. You hear this? And here's from the Akron uh, Beacon Journal. Black teen mob attacks white family. It's a terrible story. Out of nowhere, the six were attacked by dozens of teenage boys who shouted, This is our world. This is a black world as they confronted the white family. Now, that's an uncomfortable story, I admit. Nevertheless, it needs to be reported. A group of uh, teens, blacks, attacked a white family while they were watching a Fourth of July fireworks display in Firestone Park. His uh, daughter and wife were there. But Akron police are not ready to call it a hate crime. And that's, of course, because the perpetrators were not white. Apparently only whites can perpetrate a hate crime. But to Marty Marshall, his wife and two kids, it seems pretty clear. What happened? They're at a fireworks show. Out of nowhere, the six were attacked by dozens of teenage boys who shouted, this is our world, and this is a black world, as they confronted Marshall and his family. The Marshalls, who were white, say the crowd of teens who attacked them and two friends, June 27, numbered close to 50. The teens were all black. This was almost like being a terrorist act, Marshall said, and we allow this to go on in our neighborhoods. 
They said it started when one teen, without any words of warning, blindsided and assaulted Marshall's friend as he stood outside with the others. When Marshall 39 jumped in to defend his friend, he found himself being attacked by the growing group of black teens. His daughter, Rachel, 15, who weighs 90 pounds, tried to come to her father's aid. The teens knocked her to the ground. His wife, Yvonne, pushed their son, Donald 14, into bushes to keep him protected. Did you hear this? My thing is, Marshall said, I didn't want this, but I was in fear for my wife, my kids, and my friends. I felt I had to stay out there to protect them because those guys were just jumping, swinging fists and everything. I'm lucky they didn't break my ribs or bruise my ribs. I thank God they concentrated on my thick head because I do have one. They were trying to take my head off my spine, basically. After several minutes of punches and kicks, the attack by the black gang ended and the group ran off. I don't think I thought at that moment when I tried to jump in, Rachel Marshall said, but when I was laying on the ground, I was just scared. Marshall suffered a concussion and multiple bruises to his head. He spent five nights in the critical care unit at Akron General Medical Center. The construction worker said he now fears for his family's safety and the thousands of dollars in medical bills he faces without insurance. He says, I knew, well, you got the picture? The Akron police are investigating. Right now, the case is not being classified as a racial hate crime because, well, well, because they were, the victims were white and the perpetrators were not white. That can't be a hate crime. Only whites can commit hate crime according to the insane country we're living in. The department's gang unit is involved, police said. We don't know if it's a known gang or just a group of kids, said Police Lieutenant Rick Edwards. I love a group of kids. Don't you love it? Now they're a group of kids. I love it. The marshals say they fear retaliation in the home when they go outside. They're considering arming themselves, but they're concerned about the possible problems that come with guns. Huh. There are no problems that come with guns, my friends. No, no. For now, they're hoping police can bring them suspects. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Marshall said this makes you think about your freedom. In all reality, where is your freedom when you have this going on? The answer is, Mr. Marshall, there is no freedom when you're living in a nation where it is, there is reverse racism, where whites are now targeted, Mr. Marshall. Maybe we should raise some money for the marshals for their hospital bills. They're uninsured, after all, and they're not illegal aliens. If Mr. Marshall and his white family were illegal aliens, they wouldn't have a problem now with medical bills because Uncle Obama would have taken care of them, right? Uh, right off the bat, Uncle Schumer would have taken care of them. They would have gotten free medical, you know, free psychological. But more than that, isn't this a hate crime? If a group of blacks attack a white family and scream at them, this is our world and this is a black world, is that not a clear hate crime? To me it is. And yet the Akron police, well, they don't know. Strange, isn't it? Strange how justice doesn't work in America. 1-800-449-8255, michaelsavage.com. Any topic is fair game that I touched upon today. The storm has blown over. The storm has come off the ocean. I'm right over my studio, blew out the electricity. The uh, generator went on. The boys, the men were able to reconnect my circuitry. I'm back on the MPLS. I got my, my system working. It's unbelievable. Uh, the technology today is astounding. Let's go to the callers. New York City, Dan, W-O-R. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Mike, I have a theory uh, why you kind of embrace thunder as a noise as opposed to a lot of other noise in this world. It's, there's not a show that goes by that you don't mention the Bible. And the Bible, actually in the Talmud, it says that God created thunder only to straighten out crooked hearts. And you don't have a crooked heart. Actually, you're a very, very straight person, a very honest person. You speak from the heart. And that's why I think when you hear thunder... You are connecting to God. On <laughs> I don't know. I'm happy when I hear thunder. I feel I feel giddy inside. I laugh when I hear thunder. That's right, because you have nothing to straighten out. Isn't that You're funny? Busy. I don't know. Are, are you are you a, a a religious leader of any kind? Um, I'm a, I, I'm a studious person in in the Talmudic tradition. In no, but are you are you a rabbi? Are you a Jewish scholar? I wouldn't call myself a scholar, but I'm not a, I'm not yet a rabbi. Oh, you, you are already to me. You're more so than most of them who call themselves that, that I've met in my life. I'm sorry to tell you, because I have... Anyway, I want to be positive. You, you understand things in a way that's phenomenal, Dan. And so, uh, Dan, you know, if you um, want to communicate with me by email, the guys will give me your number. I, go back again to what you said. You said that thunder is God's way of reaching man, and you said that the... 
Explain to the people the Talmud of the five books of Moses. Is that correct? The, the Talmud is the oral tradition, the oral law, which was given at the same time as the written law, which you know as, everyone knows as the Bible or the Torah. And the Talmud is the explanation of and interpretation of the written law. You wouldn't even know how to read Hebrew if it wasn't for the Talmud. You wouldn't know any understanding of the verses. Wait, wait, so this, this statement about God and thunder is in the Torah or the Talmud? Talmud, I can tell you exactly where you can look at it. All right, so it's in the, it's in the um, analysis or explanations of what the Bible says. And whoever wrote the Talmudic understanding of the Bible claims that thunder is God's way of, of doing what? Straightening out crooked hearts, and it was created for no other reason. Wow, I love that. That's really an, an amazing interpretation. So in other words, they're saying that, that uh, crooked people are frightened of, of thunder. Is that correct? 